Hi everybody. I have gotten so, so, so many questions and so many people wanting to try this. I love it. So thank you to everyone that is making the attempt to try this and showing me your results. I think it's great. I have some people telling me I'm cuckoo crazy. Why would I give away, <clears throat> excuse me, something like this so other people can duplicate it? Um, because I enjoy seeing other people excited about things. I think it's fun. And to people that aren't really, I guess, artistic or don't have that creative soul, they wouldn't understand that. So with that said, I am glad everyone likes it. If you want to credit me in your post when you do, that's great. Go ahead. If you don't, you, that's fine too. I mean, I'm not doing this for any type of credit. It's just fun to come up with new ways. And I've already, over the last couple days since I came upon this and decided to try it, I have got so many more ideas that can be done with it. So today, I am going to do a little bit different. So I am going to use Floetrol instead of Elmer's glue. And I am going to use it in the paints. 60-40 uh, mix, 60 paint, 40 Floetrol. And the paints I'm going to use today are... Apple Barrel Wild Iris. You can see that's a pretty deep purple. It's very pretty. And then I am going to be using Metallic Amethyst by Folk Art. It's a very pretty metallic color. And I'm going to be using white. So with the white today, I'm going to try a a little bit of a cheaper paint. You do have to be careful with these because they do get lumpy. Um, so just make sure that when you're pouring it, you're trying to see if you got all the lumps out, lumps out or not. This one is at Michael's, um, but they have some other brands that you can get that are inexpensive there and at Hobby Lobby. And then also Walmart has some generic brands that are pretty cheap that I have used and they were pretty good. Uh, this Craftsmart is this is going to be the first time I've used it so I'm not quite sure and with that oh excuse me I forgot one I'm also going to be using a, a bright silver it's iridescent bright silver it's Liquitex, Liquitex ink is that in focus there you go Liquitex bright silver iridescent bright silver and I'm going to mix that with the Craftsmart crystal glitter paint so for some shimmer and I'm gonna I did a little test pour that's why the cups are down here you always want to make sure that you're doing a small spot before you pour on a big canvas or a big board yes you can scrape it off but that's a lot of wasted paint if it's not going to be the color and the design you want so just even a little piece of cardboard a piece of plastic just something that you can go and put a small amount of paint and see if it's going to react the way you want it to. So I'm going to pour these paints in here 60 40 60 paint 40 flow trial and I will be right back. Okay guys uh, I had the 60 percent paint and 40 percent you could do a 50 50 if you want and then I'm just going to stir it you want to make sure you stir them each nicely you kind of have to be aware too. I mean, we've all had flops. I'm I'm new to this still, so I've had a lot of flops at first. I had no clue, and I just kept trying and trying and trying. And the key is in the thickness of the paint. I will say that it doesn't matter if you use Floetrol or just paint in water or paint with alcohol to get cells. Uh, it doesn't matter what you mix it with. It's the consistency of the paint. And each technique, I've learned that there's different thicknesses to the paint for each technique. So just because you have your paint a certain thickness, for one and you've got it down pat, it may not work for another. And this one, you do have to have thin paint. 
I did put a little bit of glitter in these because I just want them to shine. And this is just really a canvas board that is more or less a practice thing. Sometimes these things do warp. <clears throat> but you can get the back side of it wet. And that is said to reduce the warping on them because then both sides uh, are wet. So it equals each other out basically. So I did put a little bit of glitter in there. It's the same glitter I used the other day because I don't like the lumps. Um, it is Sulin, Sulin, Extra Fine Glitter, and I got that at Walmart. It was very inexpensive, and it's just a white Extra Fine Glitter, and it's very, very, very pretty. Um, the only reason I'm not using the gold today, because I love that gold. It's gorgeous. It's so beautiful. Um, is because I wanted to try some different colors because uh, people were messaging me and asking me if it will work with this color and that color and I'm sure it will. We're going to find out. So today what I'm going to do is also I've got a, a bottle. You can use distilled water or this is spring water. Don't use tap water if you have hard water. Too much in it and it it can make the painting yucky, for lack of a better term. Um, so I am going to put quite a bit of water in each one. And this is in place of using silicone or alcohol. The silicone is so, so, so hard to clean up for me when you want to coat your painting, the final coating. Um, it's just a pain in the behind, honestly. So... If this soap will work for cells, um, that's going to be what I use because we all have to thin our paint down for this type of art. Just a matter of how thick. So I want it to run a bit thicker than water, but not as thick as heavy cream. I want it thinner than a heavy cream. And you want to make sure once you're stirring this into one and you go to another color, right before you pour go back and check your colors again because in the time that it takes to mix the rest of your colors that first color can thicken up <clears throat> excuse me allergies so some colors will sit and thicken up as they sit and you don't want that because then you're going to get bleeding issues into colors so if you have a, a thinner color depending on what it is next to a thicker color it's going to bleed into that color and I guess uh, if you want that effect then plan on it I know I accidentally got it the other day and that's how I learned that lesson is that my black was thinner than the other paint somewhat and it ended up sprouting little trees all over my painting which are cool when you want them when you don't want them not so much so you can see this is very thin so I'm going to mix the rest of these colors real quick with that amount of water, and I will be right back. Okay, so we have our paint all mixed up, and we have the water in there. I did have to go back and put some more soapy water in the white, uh, because it seems the white thickens up more so than other paint when you let it set, um, from what I've found so far anyway. And before we get started... I wanted to show you guys how this dried. Hopefully you can see just how, look at the gold in this. That metallic gold, that deco art metallic gold is amazing. Can you guys see all that shimmer? It is gorgeous. It looks 3D. And every single line is intact. Not one of them dried out. And you know how sometimes cells... Uh, you will have them, and then once the painting dries, it's gone. This did not. It's just gorgeous. So I wanted to show you how they do dry. Now this is on a board, but I also have one on a 16 by 20 canvas. I can't fit that in the frame. 
but hopefully you can see that the shine on it is just amazing and again it lost none of the lines none of the line work is gone um, I did put a little bit of silicone in the red in this one because I wanted to see if I could get uh, dew drops raindrops kind of and it did I mean it's definitely there and when decided on if I like that or not so we shall see but it's very pretty um, I wish you could see it close up you can see every line is intact it turned out so so pretty guys I love it and that is on a 16 by 20 canvas with some negative space okay what else oh let me show you these too So this is the first one I did that got me thinking about why can't I get another pattern. So I did this one with the metallic and it's beautiful. I love it. Very pretty. Very shiny. The edges stayed nicely. The cells traveled down the edges. So it was just the right consistency. So right after I did that one I thought, come on, there's got to be more. What if I did this? So I did this one and it was with the lines. Um, on this one I also put a little bit on the corners. So I striped over them. On this one, this one, and this one. And then I let my circles or rings come down this way. And I love how this turned out. It, it looks like so many things. To me it looks like a spinal cord, a vertebrae, a skeleton or an MRI. And again, the colors went down the sides beautifully. Didn't lose any of the color. You know how sometimes you get the ones where the color is lighter down the sides? You, you don't get that at all with this thickness of paint and with this method. So I just wanted to show you that it dries really nicely. Again, all the lines stayed intact and it's just a matter of how you want to tilt this way. Obviously, I tilted more of the lines to be thicker, and this way I liked them thinner. So, I wanted to show you those. I, I will keep those forever because they are the ones that got me started on this whole thing. So, today, I am going to start by putting a little bit of white paint on. Someone asked me to do something without coating the entire canvas or board and ask me if it would work. Uh, my answer is, let's find out. It might not be as flowy, I guess, um, at first. So we shall see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of my gray in the center because gray can get muddy depending on what colors you mix it with and that's not really what I want. So I'm just going to start with the gray in there and then I'm going to pour in my cup, I'll put white first and remember if you put a lot of white and you pour to layer instead of letting the colors drop through the color underneath the white will turn up on top. So the first color's in, the last color's out, unless you really stir it up or if you let it drop through where it's, this paint is heavier and sinks to the bottom. So if you layer it just right, I just want a little bit of white at the end. So I'm gonna do white, and then I'm gonna put a little bit of more of the gray, just a little, because that should blend it out to be a pretty color. You would hope, right? And then I'm going to put some of my metallic. I like that color combination. And then a little bit of my silver. And this silver is the ink, remember? So it's going to have a lot more sheen to it than that pewter gray does. Which is kind of what I'm going for. And then I'm going to put my plum color 
on top of that. I think those two colors together might go nicely. I hope. <laughs> and then I'm going to put a little bit of white again. And then on top of that, yeah, we'll do a little bit of the metallic to end it. How about that? We'll stick a little bit of that in the center too. So we're going to be pouring in that. Now what I did yesterday, okay, so I'll use this instead of a popsicle stick. This doesn't do as much stirring. Um, so what I did before is one clockwise, one counterclockwise through the middle. And that way you're not really stirring it up too much. And let's see how this works out, okay? We're going to start pouring in the center. It's okay if your hands shake a little bit. Mine do, definitely. And you start by pouring just a little and let it come out. And then you start going in your circular motion. And you can tell this board isn't exactly straight. So I'm going to try to go a wee bit faster and let it kind of go out of shape. And there goes our white, because we didn't let that other paint go all the way to the bottom. So we do have the colors right in the layers we want them. And then when you get close to the end, don't let a lot of those droplets fall like I just accidentally did. Um, if you have to, tip it up and put your hand under it, because you don't want paint to drop in there. Then we let it sit for a second. I don't know if I can pick it up to show you without making a mess. So you can kind of see, is that so cool? And it looks like the dish soap does work because I see a lot of small cells forming. Hopefully you can see how cool that is. Okay, so you can either use a, a heat gun or a torch after you let it set for a second and get some of the bubbles out because there will be a lot of bubbles with this method. Okay. I also has, have a heat gun that I use and it works just fine. It doesn't blow the paint around in low setting or anything. So, from this point, let me get the paint out of the way. And then we just tilt. You do have to go slowly. I am going to assume that tilting without that paint down as a base, putting the white or whatever color you want underneath on the entire canvas board or whatever you're pouring on, whatever substrate, um, it is going to take a, a bit longer because you're not going to want to stretch out your lines too much. And you can kind of already see the lines do stretch out quite a bit more when we don't have a layer down because that layer not only helps it to smooth, it seeps up through the paint, which will help to create those lines, the rings. Every time you put a layer of paint down, it pushes on the prior layer and it pushes the white up through. I hope that makes sense. I talk with my hands a lot. So it does, it helps, it definitely helps creating those 
more vivid lines. So if you want that, I would suggest that, just based on what I'm seeing right now, I would suggest that you put that layer underneath. Now if you're worried that having that layer down will <clears throat> mute your colors too much, um, just try a different color, I would say. You know, if you if you want it to be more bright, put a metallic color underneath that will complement the colors that you're looking for. But it does look like you need something, just based on what I'm seeing here already. As you can see, it just stops in too many spots because there is nothing there to flow into. Any paint everywhere. So I am going to see if I can show you the difference here. I may have stretched it out too far for you to be able to see it. But we're going to put a little bit of paint along the edges here so you can see the difference of how this flows if we had coated it. So again, this is just an experiment, guys. This is to answer questions that I got. Can you do this without, without a base coat? Sure, you can do it. Um, I'm not sure you'll like the result because I certainly don't right now. The good news is you use something like a canvas board to practice on and it's okay. I mean, you can scrape it off and reuse it if you want. You can throw it away because they're inexpensive enough. Definitely don't like how the paint reacts without being on the paint, on a, a undercoat, I guess for lack of a better term. Because it just flows so much more nicely and it helps to create those beautiful rings that everybody likes. So I'm going to see if, if I haven't stretched it out too much, just so you can kind of see how it flows when it goes on to, yeah, see, can you tell how much better it's flowing now? Now we won't get the perfect rings we got before because I didn't have this under the entire painting on the entire board. So we won't get the, the rings that I would usually get or have gotten. Look at the bottom. Do you see where I didn't put any paint? How the paint is just flowing right around those spots. I'm sure you've run into that before and you have to touch it to do that. Well, you don't really want to touch it when you're trying to get ring art, right? So that's... Uh, that's definitely not going to be something I try. I mean, I may come up with a different, maybe a different consistency of the paint somehow to use it without that base coat. Uh, but I can tell you right now that it does not do anything close to what I would want it to do.
So I hope that helps everyone. This was just a how not to do it because I had been asked, um, will it work without coating the canvas? And you know, yeah, you can see that the paint is out there. There's some rings in it. But it really, you know, it really doesn't do anything amazing by any means. So I'll just stop right there because I'm going to end up scraping that anyway. So let me, let me wipe my hands off and I will take the camera down and let you see what it turned out like. Okay, so here is the end result. This is if you do not put paint on your canvas underneath as a base coat. It's a white, blue, pink, I mean whatever base coat you want. Just make sure it's one that is not going to seep through your other colors unless you want it to. But it just doesn't flow enough. So your lines will get a little kooky like this. And it just doesn't flow enough. So if you want to have the art uh, that we talked about and that I've done before or the results, then you really need to have that base coat to have this. Huge difference, right? Or that. This. <laughs> or that. So the lesson of the day, uh, yeah, don't do it. Do not pour your paint in our little ring circles unless you have a base coat down that is wet. All right, guys, that's it. I do have another video coming of uh, how to do it the right way, but with a little bit of a different product. So be sure to stay tuned. Thanks.